Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at the lab that I have set up specifically as it relates to Federation, just that way that you know how it's set up and that sort of thing. I'm not going to go into the full implementation from complete scratch of Federation, but what I will do is explain the steps or the relevant things you need to know to deploy it. The good news is a lot of this stuff, if you followed my NF60 from scratch series, even though that was on 3.0, it's all still relevant. It's really just deploying OVAs is probably the biggest part of this. So that said, let's jump in and take a look at this. All right, so we have this lab here. This is my home lab. I have a Juniper EX2200 switch that I can't stand. And for the for the vSphere host, I have three physical hosts. I've actually added another one since then, so I have four now, but this is conceptually the same thing. And what I'm doing is I'm doing nested ESX for this entire Federation lab. So everything in red here is basically either vSphere or vCenter. So I have two locations. I have San Francisco and Los Angeles. And within each location, I have vSphere hosts. I have a vCenter, we can see it here, San Francisco vCenter, Los Angeles vCenter. And then as far as the hosts go, I have two kind of types of hosts. I have compute hosts, this is where my VMs will live that I'll be testing with. And then I have the edge host, which is just a vSphere host for my edge nodes to live on. Now the stuff in blue that you see here, this is the stuff that is Federation. And specifically, I guess that's not even completely true because right here, if you look, we have San Francisco dash NSXT LM, which stands for local manager. As I've mentioned a few times, LM is nothing more than an NSXT manager. This is the same thing, again, as I mentioned, that you deployed if you followed my NSXT 3.0 from scratch series. Nothing different, nothing at all. Um, the global manager is new though. That's a new component, but it's technically the same OVA that you used to deploy the LM. The only difference is when you deploy that global manager, you're gonna change the role from NSXT manager, I think it is, to global manager. That's it. Other than that, the deployment is really simple. So now where we're going to pick up in this series is we're going to start with, okay, you have the global manager deployed, you have the LMs deployed, go. That's where you start from right there. And that's where we're going to work on. So we're going to register the LMs to the global manager. We'll work on stretching segments, looking at how things look and that sort of thing. Uh, I will be going over routing as well. I know that's a big topic for everybody. And unfortunately, routing is one of those things where it can get really complicated, but I'll share some resources with you guys that will help. And of course, I can do some demos and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys how some of that works. So I can demystify some of it for you. But if you wanna go super, super deep, there's hundreds of pages of documents that I can share with you that will definitely help you with that. So that said, the last thing I wanna talk about in this lab is I have all these nested hosts as I do with all of my other videos as it relates to NSX, I'm trunking all VLANs to everything. So if we look at these physical hosts right here, so physical host one, two, and three, the actual switch I have here, this horrible Juniper switch, I'm trunking all VLANs down to these physical hosts. Now the VMs themselves for the nested ESX, I'm doing the exact same thing. I have a port group that I set up on each of these hosts. And actually I think I have a distributed port group, but same concept, doesn't matter which one you use. What I've done is I basically said, I create a port group, allows VLAN zero through 494, and I set that as my interface for all of my nested hosts. The only things in this picture that are not using a trunking port group are the global manager, the LMs, which I both put those on the same management network, and then I also have my vCenters as well. Those are on the management network as well. Other than that, everything, I'm trunking everything to essentially. Now I will say that we'll get into it a little bit, but Federation will require you to have a new RTEP VLAN. This is basically a TEP VLAN like you know within one site, but this is specific to each location. So you would have an RTEP VLAN for site A, an RTEP VLAN for site B. So for me, I use VLAN 99 here, VLAN 100 here. This is exclusively used by your edge nodes for that inter-site communication um, that runs on Geneva essentially. So they will be encapsulating traffic on those VLANs and those VLANs need reachability and jumbo MTU and that sort of thing. So that is new to Federation. In my lab, all of the VLANs are configured on this physical switch right here. So that's where I've done that. So I wanna point that out as well, but it, everybody always asks me about jumbo MTU, VLANs, that sort of thing. My advice is just do jumbo MTU on everything you can if you're able to in your home lab it will save you headaches. I've heard a lot of people have some weird issues when they don't enable Jum Jumbo MTU. That said, Jumbo MTU is not technically required between locations, but it is highly, highly recommended. So it's kind of weird because within a location, you have your TEP VLAN, you have to have Jumbo MTU for that. No getting around that. 
But then between locations, you technically don't have to have Jumbo MTU on those RTEP VLANs. So I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. I just want to throw that out there. The reason I didn't go through the whole Federation deployment from scratch is it's a big lab. As you can see here, um, I mean, I think I've allocated well over, I don't know, I want to say about 130, 150 gigs of RAM just to this lab. So it's, it's pretty heavy. So by all means, if you can follow along, you should. And I've got a pretty pretty large lab as it relates to Federation. You could strip some of this out, some of these nested hosts, but this is just the way I chose to do it. So that's all I have for you in this video. In the next few videos, we'll dive in more. So I'll see you there.